welcome to the Human Values Podcast. We're so happy to have you here again. And um, I, we don't know when you're listening to this, but it's the end of almost the end of 2020 for us. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a year, I'm sure. You've experienced it as well. And so that's why we're here today. We're just reflecting on this year, reflecting on, um, you know, joy. What does joy mean during these times? And um, yeah, just give you a little bit of hope, a little bit of laughs, a little bit of looking forward to the next year. So hang in with us if you are interested in listening to this. And of course, we're going to have some activities. So if you want to gather a paper and some coloring pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you use, paint, um, to this podcast is a little more interactive with us. So we're so happy again. And just before in that, we I want to talk about our bits and bobs bits and bobs and bits and bobs and bits and bobs <laughs> you can always uh if you're thinking of us you're like oh my god that episode was so good about you know 2020 and moving on you can always go to our Kofi, uh which spelled ko-fi.com slash human values club so again ko-fi.com slash human values club to leave us um, a donation in the amount of like a coffee, you know, you're like, oh, let me give a coffee to the Human Values Club and you'll be supporting us in this podcast. Yes. Eventually, like we should have coffee with these people who donate to us. Bing. Or a chai latte. Yes. Ooh. Ooh, we love some chai lattes over here. As well, you can find us on uh, mostly all social medias on Twitter at Human Values Club, Instagram at Human Values Club, on um, YouTube at our channel, The Human Values Club, and Facebook, Human Values Club. So you won't miss it. Um, we're there. And we have a few new music videos on our YouTube channel. Thank you to Javier, who we have over here. How are you doing, Javier? Oh, so good, so good. Yeah, the YouTube was started with a lot of talky-talky, and now we have a little more singy-singy, so I'm really happy about <laughs> that. And uh, excited for when we can get Victoria to add her mandolin stylings onto some of that music. Yay! I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> Victoria has been playing the mandolin, so, you know, if you have any um, requests, any, um, you know... Holiday parties you need a mandolin for? <laughs> you can call Victoria. How are you doing, Victoria? Yes, I'm doing great. Um, a lot of it has to do with that I get to play mandolin every day. That was a, a Christmas gift from my girlfriend. So I've been um, ding, 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 ding in a way um, and practicing a lot. So, um, but yeah, other than that, it's my favorite um, time of the year, Christmas time. Um, no snow yet. So, uh, let's go mother nature. What are we, what are we doing here? Um, but yeah, it's been a good, um, it's been a good holiday season so far as best as it can be. Yes. Yeah, so many, so many good things. And, uh, lastly, but not least our dear wisdom bringer and laugh spreader. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Melody, how are you doing, Melody? Hello. Thank you for that introduction. Wow, I feel so loved. Um, I'm I'm doing good. Yeah, I think despite everything, um, making the best out of this holiday season and just, you know, looking for the little things that I can be grateful for and holding on to those as tightly as possible. Um, yeah. But I'm happy to be here. Super excited for the conversations that are to come. And thanks for everybody who's listening. Yes. Thank you so much. And uh, Melly peeked into our little bit of our conversation. So before that, we just wanted to do uh, take some time for a meditation. Um, so if, wherever you are, if you can sit up, either if you're in your couch, a chair, the floor, your bed, wherever, just um, if you can bring your back straight. And just um, find a comfortable space where you can bring your shoulders up and let them fall. Take a deep breath in 
and release it. And you're gonna pay attention to your feet right now, touching whatever first surface is touching right now. Let's thank our feet for bringing us to good places. Then let's move up through our legs and let's thank our limbs really for, for helping us move throughout the day and do the things that we like. And then up our torso, all our organs. Let's send a little love to all our internal organs. Up to our chest, down through our arms, all the way to our hands. And put your hands like little cups, facing up in the, as if wanting to receive what you need. And take another deep breath in and breathe out. This moment is for yourself and only for yourself. And whatever we do for ourselves, we can share with others. So keep your hands like that in little cups. Bring back your attention to your chest. And imagine there's a little flower in the middle of your chest where we're gonna put everything that we wish for the next year. Anything that you want to bring into your life, that being peace, joy, that being success in any way, that whatever that means for you. Maybe you wanna really see your friends and family and other people, so. All those wishes, let's keep it in the middle of our chest. And then finally, let's just bring our attention to our head. Think about the space above of your head. And imagine that you have like a little string that is pulling your head up. And there's more and more space above your head. Take a last deep breath in. And breathe out. And we'll just have a few seconds just to yourself in silence. And let's take a moment just to imagine what is what goodness we want to bring into our lives. All right, take a final deep breath in and breathe out. And you can start moving your legs, your arms. You can stretch out like a cat or a dog, depending on your... Or a lion. Or a lion. Yeah. Yes, I'm going to start using that one. You probably were like, wait, is this a podcast? Or this is like my meditation app. <laughs> <laughs> it's both. So... Now that you're all relaxed, hopefully, and uh, ready to listen, I want to ask my friends over here, how have you found joy during these times? And if you want to take it, take it a step back, uh, what, me, what does joy mean for you <laughs> during these times? Since it means different things for all of us. Um, and yeah, just... What have you reflected from this year? What has come up for you? Yeah, I can jump in and, and maybe say that I had a little bit of a redefining of what joy meant for me this year. Um, you know, and it's just an interesting thing as we're talking about feelings, you know, emotional education and human values, when we're thinking about as kids grow, not being able to articulate like, what they're feeling and what they're going through. And basically learning very basic, like happy and sad, right? Or kind of like, how you doing? You know, you have a very limited amount. Um, so, and I, I think we get caught up in feeling like, oh, that, that's what joy is. Joy just means like happiness. 
And I think the redefinition of joy for me was, you know, joy is a posture or a mindset or even, I don't want to say the word attitude because that word has a lot of (laughs) negative connotation for me, Um, mainly from schools, right? Fix your attitude, blah, blah, blah. Um, But yeah, I think redefining that word or seeing that word in a new way of this, it's not, it's not a bad thing to be joyful even when the whole world around you is burning because actually your joy is almost like a tool of longevity um so if we're talking about this conversation of you know uh human values work abolitionist work um anti-racist education social justice it's very dark things and um it's really hard sometimes um so so thinking of joy as I, we need this in order to, to survive and maybe get to a thriving place one day. Um, so it's like let, let, joy becomes a posture or something that we practice. And in that way, it becomes more like a human value to me of like, no, we value joy. So we're going to make sure that we, we talk about it. We make it central to the work that we're doing for our longevity because, yeah, I think it's, it's just important. It rejuvenates us and it keeps us going. So that's kind of how I... I saw that redefined for me this year. I'm really grateful for all the teachers and all of our conversations around that. Yes. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. I feel there was a lot of redefining and <laughs> for us this year. Um, yeah. What about you, Victoria? Um, yeah, I like what Javier was talking about, kind of like redefining what joy is. I remember at the beginning of this whole like pandemic and when things were just really getting rough for um, or continuing to be rough for people of color, marginalized people um, during a pandemic. So double whammy, triple whammy. Um, It was really hard for me to find joy because of all, like you said, because of everything that was going on, the world was burning, people were dying, people were getting hurt and nothing was happening to fix it. So I remember being like, well, no one should feel happy right now. Like when people are like, how are you doing? Everyone should be like, we're screwed and nobody's happy. But, um, I think like, you know, doing a lot with, you know, our conversations of human values and like, you know, being like being what you want to spread throughout the world, like being the example Um, I think that kind of helped me to like find joy and continue to like push it out to other people, um, you know, to help them kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, cope with what was happening in the world. So I think, um, just like our conversations have definitely helped a lot, helped me redefine as well. Um, and there's, I know when I think about joy, there's like almost like this, like feeling of contentment. So instead of being like, you know, joy is happiness all the time, it's almost like being content, being like you feel like you are at the place that you want to be. Like, I feel a lot of joy when I'm with my girlfriend for obvious reasons, because she she is a joy. She is a, you know, very kind and selfless person. So how can you not be joyous around a person like that? Um, You know, playing music also very joyful because there's that content and that like pattern of this is how I practice. This is what I do. Um, this is how I work on something that's difficult, all that. Um, and just finding like the little things I think have really helped me like, you know, even just going for a drive, looking at people's houses decorated for the holidays or, um, reading a book that I haven't had a chance to read in a week or having a, double date watching Christmas movies with some friends via Zoom. Like, you know, there's joy everywhere. You just kind of have to find it and be okay with grabbing some for yourself. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, grab that joy, everybody. (laughs) You grab that joy. (laughs) Hashtag grab the joy. (laughs) That's great. I love that. Um... Speaking of grabbing joy, um, I feel like for me, uh, I mostly went through this phase of um, 
well at the beginning of the pandemic when things got really crazy i i feel like i was like stuck in a room with all my all the demons that i had placed into a box and said okay i'll deal with this stuff later like after i graduate or like when i'm no longer in school or when i'm less busy or whatever yeah. it is um and then finally all of them just kind of came out and were laughing at me and and anyway and so i feel like i had to it was really a time of kind of like it it's not okay to move on unless i deal with these things that i've decided to bury and even now i'm still dealing with them to an extent and a lot of it is just kind of being aggressive about the things that that matter or the things that are important um and i think joy for example is something that is easily not valued as much as working hard or mm-hmm. being stressed or being productive whatever that means um and i think we have to put joy and happiness and rest and all of those things at the same level as mm-hmm. working hard and all the things that we are taught in society is how we are successful or um how we are valued and um right now i'm reading this book by <clears throat> an author called Thichnan Huh, I can never say the name right. Ditch not hand. Uh, um it's called Nomad. I have it right here at my desk actually. Nomad No Lotus. It's a short read but it's really um beautiful and kind of talks about how happiness and joy are kind of like a practice and we have to like keep kind of like a you have a baby and you have to keep feeding the baby so the baby doesn't die. <laughs> um and it's kind of like the same thing of we we the gift of joy is everywhere but we have to keep feeding it and we have to be intentional and sometimes even aggressive to maintain that joy but at the same time we won't always be happy because if we're always happy then there'll be no differentiation between sadness and happiness um and so i think for me i i mostly specifically in this year i think i've had to almost be more intentional and sometimes aggressive about not allowing myself to sit in the depression of life or the sadness of it but be present with it when i'm there like say okay today i feel sad because i can't do normal things or today i'm um not very happy because i'm something triggered something of my past but the moments when i when i am happy to kind of grab that joy and to just run with it um and i think that has been really helpful to me especially in this time. Yes. Oof, y'all. Always Grab good. Grab that joy. <laughs> Grab that joy. Grab that joy. Grab it. <laughs> you pointed out some things that um it was just like fireworks in my head because um I've I've been learning from from this person from Costa Rica. Um she she's an entrepreneur and besides a lot of other things. Um where she says um that what you said of the box and the demons that there's some things that we haven't integrated you know like traumatic things happened or like difficult things happened and the body to be able to keep going and not be like stuck in that pain kind of like you know puts it in that that little box and then it's like okay let's keep like functioning and so when we have these quote unquote down moments or like moments that just like there's no other option than to look at it. Then these things come up. And um, she was just talking about, you know, accepting and honoring the feeling as it is. And then being like, okay, this happened. It can be as tragic or as quote unquote simple as you think it is. But you can say like, okay, I decide, I choose to look at this situation this way, you know? Um, And I, I know it's hard when, like, it's something that out of your control, let's say, or, like, you're like, why did this happen to me? Um, but I think it was a good reminder of, like, any situation we can really choose whenever we're ready. We can choose of, like, okay, how am I going to view this situation or how I'm going to even think about this or move on from this or act, you know, what do I want to do different So I feel like even if this was a pandemic of like, you know, health, health um, crisis, like it just 
brought up all of these emotional and um, thematic things that we hadn't integrated and that we might not have integrated completely but it just you know we're at home and like you said we don't have to, uh, all this productivity and like <laughs> um, fast going thing in life uh, but yes um, yeah and if I could jump in I think it it speaks to the fact that our society and the systems of school or work are not designed for us to have that time, Melody, you said, rest, but also even time of solitude and reflection to be able to do this inner work, which is what you're talking about, right, Andrea, is to be able to look inside and say, reflect on even normal events, but like like traumatic events and like, how did I react? What was my fault? What was not my fault? How do I, how is this affecting me today? Um, you know, and, and how do I react in similar situations or how will I react in the future? What will I do? Like, we don't have that time to sit with ourselves and we're not taught to sit with ourselves to do that inner work. And I feel like with the pandemic, that was part of the, that contributed to this big social awakening was everyone was forced to stop and be, be in solitude and reflect. And you couldn't, you couldn't go out to the bar, you couldn't go out to the coffee shop, you couldn't do this and that, all the things we do to distract ourselves from the inner reality, our inner world. So mm -hmm. it's good for us to take that time to look inside. And, and I think that's why people also, when everything did shut down, you heard a lot about people being like, well, I need to clean my whole house. I've already cleaned my kitchen five times during this pandemic in the first week. I've done like, what else can I do? Should I clean it again? Like, you know, which is cool, because maybe if you haven't cleaned your kitchen in a while, you should probably get on that. But I mean, I think people were using, were trying to find any way to keep busy, not only because, you know, there was a pandemic and what else are we going to do to distract our mind, but also to distract our mind from those boxes that we put back there full of things that we said we were going to think about when we had the time, but really we're just like, you know putting it off and not actually scheduling time um, to think about it, you know? And I think it's also just been one of those things that you think about growing up, like they make it seem like when you're in school or other adults, everyone makes it seem like you're going to be successful if you go to college for four years, if you get a job right out of college, if you do this and this and this, if you are a workaholic and have, you know, work a million hours a week, like that's the meaning of success. And I think that has really like <clears throat> almost ruined some people's, you know, peace of mind and um, ability to take that rest time and to feel okay with the rest time. I know I was like, when I was younger, I was a perfectionist and like workaholic, let's go, let's do this. But, you know, after college, I was, when I had that time to like rest and recharge and reflect, hey, RRR, rest, recharge and reflect. Um, I was like, this is a little bit insane. And I've put off a lot of things to think about. And now I don't feel I'm at mentally and emotionally where I should be, stuff like that. So hopefully that might've been a joy to come out of <laughs> the pandemic was being able to think about things that you've been putting off and that you need to think about in order to heal, you know? Yeah. That makes me think of this other maybe definition for joy mm -hmm. could be to live in agreement with yourself, you know, to be, reconnect and strengthen your rela relationship to yourself and to get to the place of like doing what you want to do and not doing what you don't want to do within reason right we all have responsibilities but um but uh, yeah living li living in agreement with yourself and that everything has this ease and joy to it and and i think we call that the the life we deserve we're always looking for to live the life we deserve. You you better grab that joy. Grab it. <laughs> and live the life you deserve. Mm. Grab the joy. Yes. <laughs> and 
Javier, you reminded me during the summer about really right after the murder of George Floyd, um, how we even every every topic we talked about, like we even label it because we were talking about it so much and we I was just getting caught up in it and you reminded me about um that joy needs to be part of the movement, right? And it just has to be part, like like uh, Melody said, of it, it should be as important as, you know, it should be something that we value, rest, and joy to um, first have the space to imagine the world that we want for ourselves, but also be able to be well, <laughs> like I said in meditation, like to be well and, and be give to others what we want to give so um, that really helped me and I think it ties perfectly with what you said Javier of um what did you say I, I said I said a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> all of it all of it connected I <laughs> all of it connected of um oh being agreement with yourself because really mm -hmm. at the end of it it does it should not depend on what's going on around you of course you will be affected what what is around you but if you are in agreement with yourself or you know you're working on that um that's what is gonna stay there like un unmovable <laughs> and um yeah again easier said than done but it's a good reminder and talking about reminders um i was Ooh. wondering <laughs> If you, <laughs> any of you during this year or just in general, have some kind of reminder, some kind of affirmation that you use to get through, you know, your most difficult times or, or phrases that you use to like tell friends, you know, like a reminder is like, remember, grab the joy or things like that, um, that you use during this time or it's just like in your toolbox. So, yeah, is there any, any one of those out there? Well, can I just start it off by stealing from the incredible RuPaul? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then who else was it? Uh, I think, uh, did Jane, no, not Jane. Someone said it that we were talking to, but or talking about. But if you can't love yourself, how in the how heck? The hell? <laughs> or hell, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Uh. Are you going to love yourself? Wait, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love Somebody, somebody else. else. There we go. Else. Yes, That's a good one. That's a good one. I stole. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Uh, but that yeah. one's a good one because I think it brings it back to finding your joy and what you love about yourself or what you do. And then you can kind of spread that along. Yes. Um, one that I try to repeat a lot and I say with my students a lot too, I think is important is be the light in dark places. Um, it's, it's so many times we find ourselves in this situation of how bleak things look. And, uh, you know, taking within all the seriousness, but kind of going back to what we were talking about with joy, of um, sometimes the most beautiful th way you can serve your community is by being the calm in the storm. And by by you know, through, through your own inner work and agreement, living in agreement with yourself and, and, just, and just growing and loving yourself, when you can live like that, you really shine and give other per people permission to shine just as brightly as you. Um, so as we do with any of the human values, it's always lead by example. Um, uh, and I think to be someone, someone like this, shine, uh, uh, being the light in dark places and encouraging other people to do that, I think it's one of the very valuable things that, that we can do is providing that example for each other of hope and strength and joy. So I, I like that one. That one's something I use a lot, like every day. <laughs> <laughs> can you also say the one you say at the end of each class? It's a longer one, but... You've made today an amazing day just by you being you. There's no one like you in the whole world, and I like you just the way you are. From that's the it. one that, only Mr. That's Rogers. A 
Yeah, riff off of him. Fred Rogers. Fred? Yeah. Melody, do you have a, do you have like a go-to kind of get yourself pumped up? Yeah, I, I think recently I've discovered some affirmations that have been helpful to me. Um, one is um, from the book, The Mastery of Love, which I recently read. It's amazing um, by Don Miguel Ruiz. Mm-hmm. Um, right? Right. Okay. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. O- official official Human Values Club book club For real. Uh, pick. So, <laughs> yeah. um, so I think one of the things that has stayed with me from that book is that there is a magical kitchen in our hearts because we are capable of, we are love. Like there isn't, there's love everywhere, obviously. And, um, it's all around us and in everyone, but there's, it's also inside us and it's easy for us to look for that in other people and in other places and forgetting that there is love within us. And, and I often forget that because I, I don't love myself enough. Um, and so I think that has been really helpful for me because I like food and I like cooking. And so to put the, to put those things together, like there's love within me and, um, thinking of like, my heart as a kitchen and that I can make this love and then share that love with somebody else, like making food and sharing a meal with other people, um, has been really great. And yeah, so I, I think there is a magical kitchen in our hearts is something that's helpful to me. Nice. Yes. I always am, like have a very vivid image when you mention that <laughs> I imagine you in the kitchen, like, da-da-da-da. <laughs> all, <laughs> all happy uh, <laughs> yes i i really i've been using this year um you know i have everything i need and i was a little resistant with that one at the beginning because either in some religious spaces or just in in general like a culture of um self deprecation like saying something like oh i have everything i need you know like it can it can be taken as um, what arrogant or something mm-hmm. that you're oh, like you already know everything yeah. and you already have everything and that's it right. no growth <laughs> and I but I I really learned that um, you know I have everything I need and it's mm-hmm. either because it comes from me like if I believe in God which I do like it comes from me through God or like from my friends you know I have the friends and support that I need. I have, um, you know, the abilities. I'm, I also like um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, um, Congresswoman Alejandro Ocasio-Cortez. Um, she said these couple of phrases, you know, I'm capable enough to do this. I'm um, strong enough to do this. I can take the space that I need. Um, there's a couple of them, and she mentioned this in a documentary that was interviewing her, like, when she was going to be elected for uh, Congress, and so, um, um, yes, it, it hit particularly uh, deep for me during this year that I had to do so many things that I didn't know how to do, and... Um, even if you don't feel in the moment, but just reminding ourselves, like, we are capable of doing these things and um, taking the space that we need, we are strong enough and um, tapping to our, um, (laughs) tapping to our support systems with our friendships and just people that are willing to help us. So um, really, yeah. We have everything we need, and when, like, when, like, uh, the kitchen metaphor, of um, it, it keeps us from thinking that you know, comparing ourselves, which is something that I do struggle a lot with, like comparing myself to other people. And so when I go back and like, wait, but you have something special to give that you don't have to. It doesn't have to look like that other person, or you don't have to do it like wow, or like you know, but. Um, we have everything we need in this moment. And of course, we're growing. Of course, there's space to grow. But um, yeah, using that as a 
jumping mm. Thank you. space. Oh, you're very yeah. welcome. It's too, and I just want to say, like, you know, this is a deeper conversation, but it's just like we're all very much conditioned to be a certain way in the world. And a lot of this work is unlearning the ways we were taught to behave. And now we're, re you know, reclaiming and sh sh waking up. We're grabbing that joy. We're showing up in our full power, ready to make beautiful things happen by, by letting our light shine. Let it Thank shine, you so much. Let it shine, <laughs> let it shine. Thinking about making things happening. Y'all, what are you imagining for 2020? You can take out your pens and markers and papers now. Hmm. <laughs> 20, 2021. 2021. <laughs> 2021. So I kind of, we can discuss this in a little bit, but I just want us <laughs> to take uh, either you uh, listening right now and us right here, just take one minute to... Um, you know, look inside, close your eyes if you need to, and just um, really tap into your gut. Like, what is it that you want for next year in in any um, area of your life? It can be like your professional life or just your personal life or new projects that you have with other people. So what is it that you would um, want 2020 to include <laughs> to have and and then how do you want to feel um when achieving this or like during this process um because sometimes you know we're just like i want to i don't know the one i always remember is you know i want to have this um weight or like do exercise every day <laughs> and then we don't think about like how we want to feel through the process so maybe yeah I still want to you know be healthy and take care of my body and I want to feel empowered and you know feel ease during the process so yeah let's just take a little bit and jot down like two or three things that um, we want to for 2021 
All right, so let's start, put our last strokes, our last letters. Make sure you put some color in there. If you are a person who loves drawing and that comes easier to you, just draw a picture of what your 2021 might look like. So, what are we cooking for 2021? Ooh, <laughs> yum. <laughs> Already excited for this meal. <laughs> Um, I can start if y'all are ready to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can start us off. Um, well, with the Human Values Club, I feel a um, big goal of mine for our next year is, um, you know, we, we want to make the Human Values Club a nonprofit organization. So that is a huge process, but... We're putting there into the universe and together with you all and a bunch of other people. Um, I know we can make it possible. So the way I want to feel about it is ease as much as possible. You know, um, you know, take time to do it and um, through every step. And really from a mentality of abundance, like... Um, you know, there are opportunities and there will always be opportunities and always from the focus of community. So w when we're in community, really everything takes, you know, a different, uh, I feel like a different taste when there's a community behind a project or behind a goal. So yeah, to make it in the spirit of community and through community. And I have other personal ones, but I want y'all to share first. Um, I can jump in next. Are we showing our little doodle oh, that yeah. we did? Yeah. Show do you have one? Do you want to show? Um, I was pretty much like. Da, da, nice. Da. So yeah. it looks like some a bullet point list for our audio listeners. <laughs> and then uh, I'll show mine first. I did mine as a timeline. This oh. is kind of based off of an exercise from the inner teacher. Um, so what I just divided it into 12 months and basically for me it's easy to organize things by month. Mm -hmm. So I have like, you know, January, um, the third year anniversary of the Human Values Club. You know, then we'll launch our website. We have our, uh, our meetup. And looking in forward, I'm really um, excited for what we're going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for this idea I have about mentorship, mentoring um, pre-service teachers and first and second year teachers. Um, it's something that I'm kind of realizing I'm really, really passionate about doing, especially preparing teachers who are going to teach in um, ur urban areas. I think it's really important to have some kind of mentorship moving into that. So we'll see how all of that goes. I'll we'll report back next year in December, right, in our <laughs> episode, next December episode, how did we do? <laughs> we'll put, like, the two episodes back to back, or, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, reflect on our, on our last one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I can go next. Um, mine are a little bit more general, because I, <laughs> I'm a leaf in the wind right now in terms of goals. Um, really, my goal is to finish school. Um, but I, I think one thing I've realized from talking to two of my close friends who are um, who are very passionate about learning, they're both like very curious people. And Jamie and Ugo, I'm everybody here knows Jamie and Ugo. Um, but they're just they're just very they're very um, they inspire me in the sense that they love learning and they, they love talking about the things that they've they've learned about, whether it's like this ancient folklore story or a language or whatever it is. And I think um, that really in, that has reminded me of how much I love learning, but how I've kind of lost touch of that because of school and because of a lot of other things. And I think I just want to re-spark that light that's within me and kind of follow... Um, 
my desire to learn the things that I want to in a given moment. And um, because I sometimes I feel trapped because now that I've declared my major or because I'm studying something specific, I have to keep on that track. And I think I just want to um, rediscover my my desire to just learn whatever's out there um, and to to do that in a way that's not to build knowledge of an ego or anything but more just because it's fun and it's 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 um hmm, what's the word it's um it feels like I'm I'm dancing with the world if that makes sense um when I just learn from others and um when I'm, you know, I love reading and I haven't done that in a while. And so I, I also want to read more. And so I feel like those are some of the things that I, I just want to, I just want to follow my heart. <laughs> and I feel like I've, I've lost a sense of what that's like, or I'm too afraid to do that in a moment when I'm, I feel, oh, I really want to, to, I don't know, um, learn about coding or something. And I can't do that because I have to finish some test or exam. Um, and then how I want to feel in, in that moment, I think I want to feel present because often I worry about my past or the future. So I, I want to feel present in the moment that I'm in. Um, and I want to feel grounded. I'm thinking of a forest, so a tree. So I want to feel grounded. And then in flow, so like the river, the river flows. Um, yeah. Whole full forest with river. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, I'm excited for you. Like I'm not even <laughs> we're not even there and I'm like, Ooh. Uh, 2021, 2021, I'm ready. <laughs> oh. New year, who dis? <laughs> New year, who dis? <laughs> Says That's 2020. <laughs> yes. Ooh, yeah, I feel that in the, the very broad goals, I feel like I have very big ideas and uh, would like to, um, for myself, just make it into something more simple or more concrete. But really, really just talking openly with you all, I just want to, next year, I just want to feel like, I'm really tapping into my, you know, my potential or like, you know, what I'm good at. I feel like I've, um, you know, say like, oh, I'm not good at that. Or like, I don't even want to try that because I'm scared <laughs> that I might be good at that. I don't know. And um, just like trying things and um, just being open to what comes up. And if it goes well, good. If not, then let's move on. And... Yes, thanks to Victoria, I've, um, what is it, rekindled, no, what is it, <laughs> my love for reading. Hey, um, nice. Yes. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> rekindled. Using my uh, Chicago Public Library card. Yes. Me I too, know. thanks to Victoria. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> reading is fundamental, but also super fun. <laughs> <laughs> the, the library is open. The library is open. Open, but not on the twenty fourth. So, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> um, I can kind of share some of my twenty twenty one goals too. I kind of did it for more of like a uh, like things that brought me joy during the pandemic, and that like I want to like continue with it. So I kind of strayed away from like the work aspect and kind of kept towards like maybe my hobbies or my passions. So I split it up into four. So I had mandolin as one because I just love, I like love playing with Anna because she also has a mandolin. So we like duet and learn together, watch videos. And it also is like, I want to use it in my teaching as well. So like, just like, ha I like want to feel confident in being able to bring that with my younger students and singing with them and doing chords for them. So that, and then so... The other three things were cooking, exercising, and travel. So cooking, I really got into for during the pandemic, and I just love making things. I love creating things. So I guess I want to like feel comfortable cooking and like 
comfortable adding new ideas to maybe recipes that I've already done like five or six times. Like I want to be like, oh, well, I'm going to try it with a little bit of this. So I'm not going to look at the recipe, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then like with exercising, I love being active and I love just like working on like fitness stuff. <laughs> Um, and so I, I kind of went back to doing my like insanity program during the pandemic because I could just do it from home and it's really helped my body a lot. But I think during 2021, I want to try new things and I want to like continue to be challenged and kind of want to try like um, bouldering again because I tried it once and then the pandemic happened. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to go to a bouldering wall because people, everyone's touched that. So I like want to get back into being challenged with that because I think that would challenge my body a lot. Um, and then travel. I bet that's on a lot of people's lists of things to do for 2021 when it's safe. But it's really kind of hard to remember sometimes that even like there's certain places in our country that naturey like that are uh, that are naturally very beautiful that's what I was looking for the word naturally um that are naturally very beautiful and um very special to our country um and then you know multiply that times so many places around the world like I want to just like make more time for travel and not be afraid to go somewhere that I've never gone before um in worries that I won't know where I am or what I'm doing it's like no just just grab it. Just grab the tickets. Grab that joy. Grab that joy. <laughs> grab the tickets. Grab the suitcase and go for it. So, um, yeah, the lot of things going on in 2021, but I think we can do it. Mm. Uh, mm. Just buy one more ticket, which is one more ticket for me. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> We're all going to go. <laughs> just real quick, I, I do want to add just to if we could also think about all the people who didn't make it to the end of the year who mm -hmm. died from this pandemic or for other reasons and all people who've lost loved ones all friends family and their 2021 will be forever changed um because of that i just want to take the moment to recognize that yes definitely yeah we are with all of all of you who might have lost someone this year. Um, and even if you did the most you could to protect yourself, um, you know, there's, it happened and unfortunately, um, there could have been things done to prevent that. Uh, but now that we're here, like you said, you know, now that we're here, we, we are with everyone who might be experiencing loss and that grievous, uh, not lin linear and, you know, my things might come up, you know, might you might not integrate the whole situation right now. Things might come up next year, might come up in, uh, three years. Um, and so to just accept the moment and accept the feelings as they come and honor them because it's part of the process. Mm -hmm. But yes, thank you so much, Melody, for reminding us of that. Um, to um, end our time today, uh, Victoria has a practice guide to share with us. Yay! Awesome. Um, so we have two more practice guides for the rest of the year. So... Um, this second to last one that we are doing this week is solidarity and that's our sub value. So that fit, we put that under the universal human value of nonviolence. So to remind you all, the universal human values are truth, love, peace, nonviolence, and right action. And we're, we kind of zoned in zoned. No, mm, zoomed in, <laughs> zoomed in. There we go. <laughs> um, Honing in, that's what I was thinking about. Okay, uh, we zoomed in on nonviolence uh, with the subvalue of solidarity. Um, our thought of the week, we uh, took a quote, um, and the quote is, let us stand in solidarity, not to a specific country, race, or religion, but rather to humanity. So let us stand in solidarity with humanity. Um, the objective of this subvalue this week is um, 
through solidarity to educate ourselves and to stand with others against the injustice system and um, specifically the prison industrial complex. So when we send out our practice guides, we have activities that you can do and also an action step. So our action step um, involves um, supporting the Chicago community jail support. And that's why we kind of honed in on, um, uh, you know, being in solidarity with um, people who are involved in that and people who are affected by the prison industrial complex. Um, yeah, that is the sub value of the week. And uh, let us know if you want to get those to your email so you can um, practice um, the values with us each week. Yes, you can definitely send us an email at to um, humanvaluesclub at gmail.com. Humanvaluesclub at gmail.com if you wish to receive these um, newsletters every week, every Monday or Tuesday. Or Tuesday. <laughs> 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 you will receive it. That's for sure. You will receive it. And just remind us, if you wish to give us a coffee, give us a donation in the amount of a coffee, remember to go to our ko-fi.com slash human values club and if you have a hard time remembering just sing ko-fi <laughs> that's right mm-hmm. and click there say you can donate more than uh, a coffee mm. whatever you want if you enjoyed this uh, episode we are really thankful that you were here with us. Thank you to Melody, Victoria, Javier, always. And um, yes, we are with all of you and whatever happened this year and whatever w- we will happen. Uh, sending you a lot of love. And um, yes, grab the joy. Um, grab that joy, grab everybody. That joy. You better grab that joy. <laughs> you can't love yourself. How the hell are you going to love somebody else? Hey. hey Amen. Uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> love yourself. Love the world. We'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye.